Are you guys ready to start? Yeah, I am. Oh, okay. Yep. Hi, everybody. Chef Grace here from Whole Health Every Day. Today, we're going to be making an olive oil orange cake, a Greek salad with chickpeas, a lentil bolognese, and a stuffed acorn squash that is like fall in every bite. Okay, we're gonna get started with our olive oil orange cake. So we're gonna do the liquid ingredients first. So we're gonna crack three eggs in a bowl. Okay, and to that, we are going to add a cup and a fourth of milk. Some pure vanilla extract. We're gonna add about a teaspoon and a half. And then for the olive oil, we are going to use about a cup and a third of olive oil. And olive oil is really good because it stabilizes blood sugar and it reduces blood pressure. So it's a really good healthy alternative for using any oils or butter for any kind of cakes. And it leaves it so moist Okay, and to this, we're gonna add a whole zest of a, about two oranges, because you really want that orange flavor to come out. We're just gonna juice. We need about a fourth cup of orange juice. So we're just gonna squeeze that. You can use um regular orange juice if you buy it it just tastes a lot better if you use freshly squeezed orange juice in my opinion okay so it took about two oranges for that Pour that in. Okay. And then we're gonna do a vanilla bean. We're gonna do half a vanilla bean. And the, the other half we're gonna use for icing. So, if you've never done a vanilla bean, you do not have to use this. You can just use extra vanilla. This just adds a nice, wonderful flavor. But you're just gonna cut down the middle of your vanilla bean. Make sure that is, there we go. And then my favorite part, all you have to do is get your knife and scrape it. Perfect. 
perfect. And this will make it so pretty with the little specks of black in there. Okay, perfect. Okay, now we are going to stir this up. Now this is going to be a very, very moist cake because you have lots of eggs, you have the oil in there, and then the flavor from the oranges, and also when you're baking this, it smells so good because of the oranges. well incorporated. Okay, we're going to set this aside. Okay, and now we are going to do our flour, our dry ingredients, which is, you have about two, two cups of flour. So two cups, and then actually, you need two tablespoons extra, just a little bit. Remember, you have a lot of moisture in this cake. You're going to add, now this has baking powder and baking soda, and it, both of it is just half a teaspoon. So baking powder. baking soda and one of the key things is never forget your salt because salt actually helps with your baking powder to rise so you need about a fourth cup fourth cup sorry about that fourth teaspoon of salt and that will help to allow that rise and then we're going to add about a cup and three-fourths of sugar so lots of sugar in this. Now you can use maple syrup or honey to make it a healthier option. I've done that several times, but sugar is what I had on hand. So there we go. Now, stir this up, get it well incorporated. Perfect. Okay. Now we are going to start moving our dry ingredients into our wet ingredients. Perfect. Grab a here. Now it's very important you mix this in slowly and not, do not dump everything in at a time. So about a half cup at a time. Make sure it's whisked in. Beautiful little specks of orange, is gorgeous. And you can do this in a KitchenAid mixer 
or any mixer, hand mixer would be fine. I find this is an easy cake to do and it's just as easy doing it by hand as it is in a mixer. Now, a lot of people ask if you can taste the olive oil and you can't, you can't taste it. Again, it just adds that richness and moist cake. Now you can also do lemon with this cake. Um, you can also do pretty much any citrus you think of. You can um, do grapefruit. I know some people have done lemon and lime. It's beautiful. Okay, I'm dump the rest of this in. some muscle into that. This is perfect to do with your kids and make them mix it. Okay. I believe that is well incorporated. Okay, we're going to set that aside. Move here to our greased. Add a little bit more oil. And then we're just going to take little paper towel and just grease the inside. It shouldn't stick. You have a lot of um, oil in the cake already. So it should just um, spring back from the pan. You can use any pan you like. You can use um, a nine by 13, a loaf pan. You can make these into little loaves. They do great that way. I prefer a cake pan. Makes it just pretty easier to slice in my opinion. Important part, make sure you get all those air bubbles out. So just tap it. As you can see, the little air bubbles are coming to the top. Just keep banging that a little bit. Okay, that should be good. You're gonna put it into a 325 degree oven and bake for about 15, 20 minutes, depending on your oven. Sometimes it'll take longer. Um, and then we'll get started on the glaze. Okay, now we're going to make the glaze. To this I've added one and a half cups of monk fruit powdered sugar. Um, you can buy it at any health food store, um, farmer's market, Sprouts has it. And it's just made from monk fruit so it's super healthy, no calories. And to this I'm gonna add another zest of an orange. You really want the orange flavor to come out. This is one of those things that will help. And if you don't like the orange, too much orange, then just leave it out. I love tons of flavor, so for me, more flavor the better. Okay. To that, you're gonna add about a teaspoon of vanilla, just kinda eyeball it. And then to that, we're gonna add just a little bit of milk. You don't know how much you're gonna need, so just kinda eyeball it. This is about an eighth of a cup, but you might just need a couple teaspoons depending on how much it kind of liquidates. So, and sometimes you need more, so we'll see.
This is gonna melt too on top of the cake after it comes out, which will just give it another beautiful layer of moistness. But look how beautiful that is. Okay, to make this amazing, we're going to use the other half of vanilla bean. So just kind of cut the little top off and then go down. right there and then just go back perfect again you don't have to use a vanilla bean makes it a little bit fancier a little bit more fun Okay, and there we have the glaze, and then when the cake gets done, we'll top it with some fresh oranges and these, this beautiful orange vanilla glaze. Okay, next we're gonna start on our stuffed acorn squash, which is like fall in a bite. First, we're going to cut our acorn squash, hopefully, down the middle. those seeds acorn squash is very high in antioxidants and so it's a good source of that to get in your body We are just going to place that on to a cookie sheet. There we go, so you guys can see that. You don't have to use a rack, but it's easier for me to use it. It also lets it cook faster. Spray it with a little bit of avocado oil, or rub a little avocado oil, a little bit of salt. little bit of pepper. You're gonna flip those down and then you're gonna put them into a 400 degree oven. Okay, next we are going to do the filling for the acorn squash. And this filling is super easy. Okay, next we're gonna work on the stuffing for the acorn squash. Super easy. You're going to do two celery stalks. Diced up. Thank you. 
Okay, you're gonna do half of a sweet onion. A sweet onion just has a sweeter taste when you saute it down, not as potent as a white onion or a yellow onion. Make sure you peel the outer layer off. Get that film off. Perfect. Okay, and then you're going to cut, dice that onion up. some sweetness and some tartness we're going to use about one and a half apples with the skin on the skin on is a very good source of fiber so leave that skin on if you don't like the texture I understand that and you can completely peel them is up to you but for health benefits I love to leave the skin on, especially with Granny Smith apples, they add a little bit of extra tartness because of that skin. don't want these apples too tiny because they will shrivel down so don't think diced or minced rather okay and then we're just gonna do one more half of an apple We're going to use parsley, rosemary, and thyme. So go ahead and just pick those off. Now with parsley, if you're ever making a soup or anything, put the whole thing in there, even with the, the stock, because the stock has a lot of flavor. For our purposes, we're just going to pick the leaves off, but you definitely can use the stalks too for this if you like. It will add a little bit of extra flavor. Okay. Give that a good chop. Now, if you don't have fresh, you can use dried. Now you don't need a lot of rosemary, it is very strong, and you don't want it to overpower the dish. So, this was about a fourth of a sprig of rosemary. So about a fourth of a teaspoon of rosemary, of fresh rosemary. Now for the thyme, Super easy way to do that. Pull down, you get all the leaves and not the stem. So, and you don't want a lot of thyme also. There's, this was about three sprigs of thyme. There we go. Also give that just a little bit of a rough chop. The leaves are pretty tiny. Okay, put that in there. Okay, 
Okay, we are ready to start sauteing all these beautiful ingredients up. Okay, next we're gonna start sauteing this. I'm using a, about a fourth pound of chicken breast, and you can use turkey if you like, that'd be really nice. Um, and I just diced that up. We're gonna put that into our skillet. I put a little bit of oil down in our skillet. And beautiful, that noise. And I just did a little bit of salt and pepper. Use whatever seasoning you like. Now you want the chicken to get a little brown on bottom. That gives it a lot of flavor. And the cast iron skillet is really good for that because that helps get the flavor into it really easily and gives it a nice crust. Now when it sticks like that, as you can see right there, it's not ready. So when it gets that crust on it, it'll just automatically come up easily without you having to get any of the chicken stuck to the pan. So just leave it. It's not burning, I promise. careful not to overcook your chicken because it's going to be baked but perfect now you're going to add your apple celery and onion Now don't be worried about adding any more oil or anything like that. The celery actually has water in it, so it's actually going to release a lot of moisture. So are the apples.
You're not wanting these to cook too long. Just basically sweat, make them a little bit translucent. Because you are going to be putting this in the back in the oven and baking it for a little bit. To this, though, we are going to add a about a can of Catalini beans. So Catalini beans are a creamy white bean. They're creamier than, creamier than um, Great Northern beans, in my opinion, and they are, they're a little bit bigger, and they just have more of a flavor. This is a very protein-packed dish. And if you would like, you can leave the chicken out completely. Make this a vegetarian option. It's a perfect side dish, though, to bring to Thanksgiving or any fun fall party. Okay, to this we're going to add about... A couple handfuls of spinach. Just kind of do what you like. Um, spinach wilts down pretty fast, so. And then to that, we're gonna add about a sprinkle, about a um, fourth cup, to an eighth, eighth of a cup to a fourth of a cup of cranberries. That's also gonna allow some sweetness and some tartness as well. If you're wanting a really tart, just add whole cranberries. Okay, perfect. This is looking beautiful. Okay, turn off your heat. And then we're going to add our... And take this off the heat for a minute. Bring our glass bowl back over here. Now, one of the best parts about this is the wild rice. You can get wild rice at any grocery store. I think it has more flavor, in my opinion. Now you're only gonna add about a cup of rice. And then you're gonna add your filling right back in there. Give that a quick stir. Okay. And this is ready to be stuffed into our beautiful acorn squash. Okay, we're gonna finish the orange cake, orange olive oil cake. So I'm just gonna take some mini clementines. They're beautiful, they have a ton of flavor, and they're beautiful for decorating. Sometimes regular oranges, they don't have as bright of an orange color. So we're just gonna slice those up. Now another option is you can candy these. You can even dehydrate them 
and then put them on top of the cake. Those would look beautiful. Let's see. also nice that clementines don't have all the seeds that you would find in an orange sometimes. Okay, we're going to move these over so I can decorate. So look how beautiful this cake turned out. Gorgeous. Has a nice little um, crumb on the side which is just kind of crispy. So first off is what I like to do. So I just like to take our orange vanilla glaze now this is also pretty if you just want to dust some powdered sugar on top I'm just getting basically The glue ready for this cake. Let's see, remove a little bit. There we go. Okay. Now just start so you can see a little bit of cake and then just go down from there. That glaze will help it stick, I promise. just beautiful to do this right before you serve look how gorgeous that is okay and then I'm going to get more of that glaze on top And there you go, you have an orange olive oil cake. It's beautiful. Okay, our acorn squash has been baking for about 15 minutes. So you want it to still be a little bit firm in the middle so that it'll finish baking when you add the stuffing. So I hollowed out a little bit more of the middle just to make it fit. Pile this super high. Perfect, beautiful. Last thing you're going to add is some fapitas, some roasted pitas. Place that on top. That'll add a nice little crunch. And you pop that. Okay, and you're going to pop this into a 350 degree oven for about 10 more minutes. Okay, now we're going to start on the chickpea croutons for the Greek salad. Now chickpeas are high in dietary fiber. That's another good thing. And they're alternative, they're low carb, so they have protein, they'll add protein to your salad. And you don't have to worry about having the bread and the carbs from a crouton. So add a little bit, about a tablespoon of avocado oil. 
or less. You're gonna add a decent amount of salt. About a half teaspoon. About a fourth teaspoon of black pepper. We're gonna use smoked paprika. It'll give it a nice smokiness, but a very beautiful color. We're gonna use a little bit of onion powder. And then lastly, just a little bit of garlic powder. These are super easy. Now you can also make these as just a snack, flavor them however you like. And then you can just have a roasted chickpea. They get so crispy, they're just like chips. So then just kind of swirl them around, getting all that spices onto them. Okay, and then these are gonna go into a 400 degree oven for about 15 to 20 minutes until they're crispy. Okay, we're gonna make a simple lemon herb dressing for the Greek salad. So I'm just gonna chop up some parsley, very, very, very small. a bowl and then again we're going to use the thyme thyme and lemon go so well together You can add whatever herbs you like and other herbs if you want. I'm gonna add a little bit of oregano. And dried oregano is works better for me in my opinion because sometimes fresh can be a little too strong. Okay, now we're going to add some salt. Just season it salt and pepper to your liking. Okay, now we're gonna add about a fourth cup of avocado oil. You can use olive oil too. And we're going to add two, the juice from two lemons. And then one of the key ingredients to this is a little Dijon mustard. Now Dijon mustard is gonna help you get your dressing to emulsify. So I add about half tablespoon of that. And then you're just gonna mix it up. Now for the really easy way to do this is get yourself a squeeze bottle. They're like a dollar at Walmart. Pour it into there. You 
can also do this with a jar, it works great. Put your lid on. You're gonna shake that really vigorously. And this prevents you from having to whisk and get it emulsified and also putting it in a blender and getting it emulsified. Instead, just get yourself some kind of bottle. A plastic container would work even great. Get like that. And then you have a beautiful, I'll show you the inside of this, beautiful dressing. And if it's too tart with you, you can add a little bit of um, honey or maple syrup. I like my vinaigrettes pretty um, tart, but there you go. You have a perfect dressing for on top of your salad. Okay, as you can see, these are done. They're beautifully crispy. The um, pepitas got very crispy on top and these are ready to go. Serve them on a plate, take them to a family get together and these are perfect. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to assemble just the Greek salad real fast. So, I'm gonna take these onions, this red onion. I'm just gonna slice a couple little slices off of it. See if I can get some of this off. There we go. you a couple slices. Now I like a lot of onions, so by all means. I like to cut my cherry tomatoes in half. It gives it just a little more of an aesthetic, um, a very pretty look. And then we're going to cut our cucumbers. I like cutting them in half and then little moons just so that when you're plating a salad you have different shapes and it is very pleasing to the eye okay so i'm just going to show you a little bit of plating here i'm just doing a small side salad Some of the arugula, some of the cucumber. Make sure you keep it nice and high. And then we're gonna add some Guatemala olives. And then lastly, our chickpea croutons. Look how beautiful, it adds this just reddish color to the dish. Absolutely gorgeous and so much crunch. And then lastly, we're gonna add a couple of our rings of onion. I like to do the really tiny ones. And then shake up your dressing a little bit more. Give it a little dabble. You don't need much, it's pretty strong. And there you have it, a beautiful Greek salad. I hope you guys try this and enjoy. Okay, lastly, we're gonna work on the lentil bolognese. So, we're going to first slice up our celery. Perfect. 
try to get these carrots pretty thin so that they cook really fast. sweet onion. I'm just going to dice that up. If you want more onion flavor, then go ahead and just do one whole one. And lastly, not lastly we have the garlic but we're gonna do half of a red bell pepper again you could use any bell pepper I like red I'm not a big fan of green bell peppers because of the flavor Now we're going to get all these ingredients sauteed up. Okay, well the oil's heating up. I'm going to be using a chickpea pasta for our lentil bolognese. It's made completely from chickpeas. It has 20 grams of protein and 8 grams of fiber. So great alternative for regular pasta. I'm just going to get that boiling. sauteing really nice. To that I'm going to add about a half thing of mushrooms. You can use any mushrooms you like. I am doing this on high heat. So you want a pretty hard
If you like your mushrooms chopped smaller, you can do that as well. Since this is a meatless dish, I like to leave the mushrooms um, sliced or even whole. So it just gives more texture and body to the dish. Okay, as you can see, it's gotten pretty hard here. It's nice and brown. There's starting to kind of stick to the bottom. That's kind of what you want. Because you're getting ready to add about a half cup of white wine anytime. And that's going to allow everything to come up from the bottom, not to stick. that we're going to add a can of peeled tomatoes. Kind of just break those up a little bit. of vegetable broth. Stir that in. Okay, we're gonna add two bay leaves. parsley and thyme. Just leave them whole. It's going to cook down and all those flavors are going to get in there. Add some basil, some fresh basil that's been chopped. And then lastly, we're going to be using a little bit of nutritional yeast. Nutritional yeast is a great source of vitamins and minerals, and it also kind of gives it a, if you will, a Parmesan flavor, like Parmesan cheese. So we're gonna add a little bit of that. Give that a stir. Okay, and we're gonna let this cook down for about 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, once the sauce has cooked down, you're going to add one can of cooked lentils. I did cooked because it was for the sake of time. You can get them at the grocery store canned and cooked. You can also cook them yourself. Add that. And then you have your pasta that you just cooked. Put that right over. It's beautiful. There you have it. Lentil bolognese.